Good morning, guys. Hope you guys are having a good Thursday. We'll take a few minutes for people to hop on here. Uh, while we're waiting for people to hop on, I'm actually going to grab the equipment that I need for today. Um, so stuff that you'll need is uh, a yoga mat. Uh, if you have like a massage ball or the cross ball, that would be awesome. If you have a uh, foam roller, that works great too. Um, but yeah, that's all you actually need today. So I'm going to grab that real quick. I'll show you guys the variations that you can do, whether you have a foam roller or a massage ball, um, what you have with regards to equipment. We'll make modifications as we go along. Main thing is I want to give you guys some actionable things that you guys can do right away to start managing some of this, uh, some of this pain and um, some of this discomfort and whatnot too, so you guys can start making progress on that. Um, if you guys can hear me all right, um, go ahead and put in the comments whether you can or not. That would be awesome. I'm always interested to see where everybody's tuning in from, too. Um, I know most of the people uh, are in the Oakland area, but I know we have a few people that are um, on the East Coast, and um, I think we have a few people in Texas, actually, too. Remember correctly. So, if you guys put where you're tuning in from, that would be awesome. We'll get started in just a minute. Awesome. Thanks for letting me know. I'm glad you guys can hear me all right. Perfect. All right, guys. So, we're going to go and get started. So I want this workshop to be tailored to those that are watching. Um, and if you guys can kind of describe like the frequency, intensity of the headaches, um, where you feel that at, is it like on one side, is it always on, only on the right, is it only on the left, is it kind of the, does it go span into the forehead? Um, if you guys let me know, that would be awesome too. Just kind of help formulate my thoughts and, and I can help you guys a little more specifically as well. So. All right, Con Concord, you're tuning in from Concord. Okay, awesome, awesome, not too far away. Cool, cool. Um, all right, so first of all, um, as, as you guys most likely know, uh, you guys most, most of you guys know me by now. Um, my name's Dr. Ben, I'm a physical therapist with Prokinetics Physical Therapy and Performance. We specialize in helping active adults and athletes in the Oakland and surrounding Bay Area get back to workouts and sports they enjoy without having to take time off. That's a big thing is a lot of times you'll see a physical therapist or a physician, they just tell you to rest and say good luck. Um, or they tell you, okay, we're gonna go through the rehab process, but you're not gonna be able to work out or exercise in the meantime. And in my opinion, that's actually gonna make things worse. You need to be, keep moving, keep making, uh, being active. Because if we stop working out and exercising, the muscles are just gonna get even weaker. And that leads to a whole different issues. And not just the muscles that are already weak, but muscles that, um, you know, or throughout the rest of the body can get weak, and then we start having other issues at other joints and other areas too, so it's super important to keep you guys moving. Um, so that's a bit about us. Uh, we practice within Truve, uh, one's facility here in Oakland. And, uh, um, but yeah, today we'll be talking about headaches, why they're happening, modifications you guys can make to your workstations, uh, because that plays a big factor into based on posture and how you're sitting, and we're gonna talk about that as well. And then we're also gonna go over, most importantly, a few exercises that you guys can do to start making progress with this and start getting relief. Because um, one big thing that with headaches is it can make it very, very difficult to concentrate at work. And usually, a lot of times with our posture and uh, how much we're working and uh, staring at a screen and or sitting with bad posture is actually leading to um, that the headaches and the pain. And so we kind of feed off one another too. So, um, all right. So. It's, you started, started with pain in my eyes, then full-blown headaches. Happens when I'm stressed out or too much thinking about nonsense crap. Yeah. So, stress also plays a huge factor into headaches as well. All right. Uh, there's not just one thing that causes headaches. It can be a couple different things. All right. It can be hydration status. Hydration is a huge, huge key to that. How much stress we have in our lives. 
the amount of sleep that we're getting and the quality of it. And then also the musculoskeletal system and muscle tightness. Okay? And that's the, that's the thing that we're really going to address today. All right? I don't want to be throwing too much at you guys. I want to take this in, um, in strides here. So we're going to be mainly going over the musculoskeletal system and how that can contribute to headaches and maybe the big reason that you're actually having these headaches. But those other things like stress, sleep, and hydration are also things I want you guys to be focusing on as well. And that's where you're going to be able to make huge changes um, if you focus on all four of those areas as well. Okay. All right. So I want to go over briefly the anatomy. I'm not going to go super in depth with this. Um, and so uh, but I want you guys to have a good understanding of the anatomy and physiology. Uh, because if you better understand that, then you're going to better understand why I'm doing, giving you this, the exercises I'm going to be giving you here shortly. And if you, if you better, we find it that if our patients better understand why they're doing it, they're much more likely to adhere to the exercise and keep doing it. Okay. So usually headaches are caused due to muscle tightness. And that can be a lot of times when people have um, tightness in the upper neck here. Okay, in the shoulder area up here, and then it spans up into the neck. So if that, so that muscle is called the upper trap. Okay, the upper trap attaches at the shoulder right here, and then it works its way up, and it actually attaches right at the base of the skull. And from there, we have occipital nerves, okay, that originate from here, and they span and come unwrap all the way around the head. So if our upper trap is really tight, Okay, what can happen is that muscle, because it attaches right where those occipital nerves are at, it can compress down on those nerves and then it can cause and generate headaches. Okay, so there's a lot of different types of headaches. They can be, and there's also migraines as well. Uh, migraines are different, can be different issues. It's not usually musculoskeletal related, um, but a lot of times if we have tension headaches, it can be changed through loosening up this upper trap muscle um, and improving our posture. Okay. I'm not going to harp on too much on posture because you guys know what, what good posture looks like. However, there is no perfect posture. And people are like, what? I just thought I was supposed to be like, you know, everything in alignment. Well, yes, that's ideal, but our body isn't meant to maintain a sing one single position, even if it's deemed the perfect posture for eight hours a day. The, the best posture is your next posture. What I mean by that is you need to be continuously moving, all right, changing position. Okay, our spine needs movement. We can't just be static in the perfect posture for eight hours a day. We're gonna have pain with that too, okay? So we need to make sure we're changing uh, positioning, but I'm gonna go over why we don't wanna assume a certain posture especially, um, and why that can lead to headaches. So if we were hunched over like this, all right, if I'm hunched over like this, and I'm, I've got a computer screen here, do you guys see how there's like a big kind of kink my neck here? All right, so if, gra if I just let gravity do its thing and my muscles don't contract, my head falls down like this, okay? If I wanna lift my head up, muscles have to generate that, okay, and produce that movement, okay? And so if I'm looking at a computer screen, guess what muscle is holding my head up? That upper trap. And if that muscle has to contract for eight hours a day, it's gonna get tight, it's gonna get agitated, it's gonna get irritated. And when it does that, now it gets tight, it gets overworked, we start getting mass on our top of our shoulders, and then again, it, it's the same muscle that attaches to the base of the skull. And when that gets tight, it's gonna compress on those nerves, and it's gonna wrap, and those nerves wrap around, and we're gonna start getting some headaches because of it, okay? So, one thing we can do is improve our posture, okay? Try and assume more of an upright positioning, because if we do that, watch what happens if I just change my, um, if I sit, sit up more straight, now do you guys see how everything's kind of in alignment? Now I don't have, my head doesn't have to, my muscles don't have to work so hard to hold my head up because now I'm getting support from the vertebrae. The vertebrae is the spine, okay? The vertebrae comprises, uh, compose the spine. And those are bone, that's made of bone. The bone don't, doesn't have to contract, it's just there. So it automatically just provides support just by being there, okay? So the muscles don't have to be working so hard because they're getting support from the, the bone structure and the skeletal system, okay? And the muscles don't have to work so much, and work so hard and over time, and they don't get so tight, we don't get so, so much knots and tightness and the generation of the headaches um, from the nerve compression there as well. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. All right. Um, sometimes I feel pain 
in the back of my head and then proceeds to headache. Yep. So that's, yeah, so uh, that's exactly, that sounds like a tension type headache. And so you should be able to get quite a bit of relief uh, from doing these exercises. Okay. If these seem to make it worse, if you guys do this consistently for a day or, like two or three days and it seems to make it worse, stop. These should not be making it worse. Again, I haven't done assessment on everybody. All right. And the first rule of medicine is do no harm. Okay. Main, the thing is, yeah, I haven't done an assessment on you guys. There could be a lot of other reasons for these headaches or tightness in the upper trap. Um, and we need to, um, you know, get to the root cause of it too. What about lumbar support? Great question. So yes, that's gonna, it's a little bit of a different topic for the low back, but it also does play a factor into um, our shoulder positioning at our, like, so our shoulder positioning or neck positioning. So if I'm slouched like this, do you guys see how my shoulders round forward like this? Okay, and now I'm kind of in back in that positioning. Watch what happens if I change my low back positioning and I get that arch where it needs to be. Okay, do you guys see how there's a, a curvature here? We should all have that, okay, everybody has it. Okay, just, it's just up to us if we actually use it, all right? And so if I, watch what happens to my shoulders as I correct that and my neck positioning. You guys, all I'm doing is I'm changing my low back positioning and it's working its way up the chain. It's actually improving my neck alignment and my mid back alignment. And that alone is gonna help decrease some of the tension and how much those muscles have to work. So yes, lumbar, lumbar support is actually gonna help with uh, neck tightness as well. So absolutely, good question, good question. So. Um, but you don't want to be get too reliant on lumbar support too. Okay, we want to be um, also strengthening up the core, um, and then we can then we don't have to be so reliant on our lumbar support. But in the meantime, while you build up the core strength, then yeah, absolutely, that's something that, that's something that's great to be doing. Okay, great question. All right, so let's get into some of the exercises that you guys can do to start loosening up these muscles. All right, and get you guys some relief here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit up nice and tall. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna place it behind your back. All right, so we talked about how that upper trap attaches to the top of the shoulder here. Okay, we, what this does by putting your arm down behind your back, it helps keep the shoulder down. Okay, and it keeps, allows us to get a better and more intense stretch, okay? So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna take our right arm and we are going to reach across the top and then we are gonna Gently, I don't want to, you don't want to be yanking on your neck, okay? Just use the weight of your arm. The weight of the arm is going to be enough. And what you're going to do is you're just going to lightly tilt to the side, okay? You should feel a nice stretch right through here in that upper trap, okay? And ideally, we would hold this for 30 seconds, okay? And do three sets. And we're going to do, these on, do this on both sides, okay? Again, none of these exercises should be painful, even when we're doing them, okay? Should be all, gonna feel like a good stretch, might even feel good, especially in that ones I'm gonna show you next here, okay? And if you guys want the routine for this, go ahead and put in the comments um, that you do, and what I'll do is I'll upload a link where you can access uh, these exact exercises, um, so you don't have to try and memorize these either, okay? Has a written description, video description, how many reps, how many sets, and how often we be doing them. We should be ideally doing these twice a day, especially if we are sitting quite a bit throughout the day. All right, we're gonna switch and do the same thing on the other side. Right arm behind the back, reaching across the top. And now we're going after the right shoulder. It should feel a nice stretch throughout here. And it should not be painful. And some of you guys may even feel it kind of in the front of the neck too, and that's okay. There's other musculature in the neck outside just that upper trap. It's gonna hit whatever musculature needs it the most. But typically it's usually that upper trap. Okay, all right. So normally you do three sets for time purposes. I wanna give you guys as much exercises and variations as possible today. All right, so we're only gonna be doing one set. All right, so what you're gonna do next is the same thing. Left arm behind your back, but we're just gonna make a slight change to this. Okay, like I mentioned, there's other musculature in that neck area. Um, we're gonna go after that other that, those other muscles as well. Okay, so instead of going straight to the side We are gonna actually pretend like we're trying to smell the armpit. Hope everybody put deodorant on today All right, so you're gonna bring your nose bring it down to your armpit And then you're gonna reach the back side of your head and then you're just going to use the weight of the arm To pull it down in that direction. You should feel a little bit more of a stretch kind of in the back of the neck than the last one if you don't, that's okay. It's not, it doesn't mean you're necessarily doing it wrong. It's just that, um, again, everybody's gonna be a little bit more tight. 
in different areas, okay? It's gonna be different from person to person. Okay, and again, we're gonna hold this for 30 seconds. Um, he says, my, my left shoulder feels tight. That's probably the problem. Yeah, if you guys also, it's important to make note of if you guys feel like one size is tired than another, okay, that, that testing or treatment's also a way for us as physical therapists to, that we use to test as well um, and based on what the patient's reporting, okay? So it's important to, we wanna work out those imbalances as much as possible, okay? Same thing the other direction, all right? Taking the nose, bringing it to the armpit, okay? Again, most likely you'll feel it kind of here, okay? And with treatment, variety is key, okay? We wanna be doing, doing as much variety as, as we can, You can also, um, you can also instead of putting the arm behind your back, if somebody has like, so if somebody had, comes in with shoulder pain too, um, and it's painful to put the arm behind the back, you can also grab the bottom of your chair. That works too. Okay, guys. All right. So those are two stretches. The best way to loosen up any muscles is a combination of stretching as well as foam rolling or massaging. Okay. Um, or massage ball. Sorry. Uh, so that's what we're going to focus on next. Okay. Those are two great stretches. I did this kind of backwards. It might actually be a little bit more beneficial for you guys to do the soft tissue work. The ball roll and the foam rolling that I'm going to show you guys next helps loosen up and produce blood flow to those areas and then your, the stretch is going to be a little bit more intense and be a little bit more effective. It doesn't make a huge difference, but if you're really trying to maximize it, go ahead and do the soft tissue work that I'm about to show you first and then follow it up with the exercises. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, I'll send that routine. I'll, I'll upload that um, and then I'll, I'll tag you guys too um, for those that want it. All right? So you'll, you'll get a notification. Um, actually, let me, so this is how I operate. My mind works a million miles a minute. I'm actually gonna put this in my to-do list so I don't forget here. Um, just a second. Okay. Okay, awesome. I'll have that to you guys by the end of today. All right, so you guys are gonna do, go ahead and grab a mat, okay? And then grab the foam roller as well as um, a massage ball, or if you don't have both, that's okay. We're gonna go through variations here that you guys can do. Let's see what's gonna be the best way for you guys to see here. That should work. All right, so I'm gonna, most people, a lot of people have a foam roller, so I'm gonna start off with that, okay? Then I'll just try how you can also use this uh, massage ball. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a foam roller, and this would be really relaxing, so it's probably easy to exercise that every day, okay? but it works, works wonders, all right? So, talk about how that upper trap comes up to the base of the skull, all right? But you need to get those muscles to relax. So what you can do is you can either take a foam roller or you can place the, the, the massage ball at the base of the skull, okay, right below it. If you feel the back of your head, you feel kind of like a bump, okay? You want to just go right below it, okay? All right? And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to turn our head left, Turn our head right. We're just going to do a couple reps here. Okay, so what this is doing is helping massage those muscles that can get tight back here in that upper trap, kind of closest over to the attachment site. And I don't, you don't want to be like blazing through this, you don't want to be doing this. Okay, alright, you want to be going nice and slow. Left to right. And ideally doing about 10 reps in each, in each direction. And this is a great way if you ever have headaches before you go to bed. This is a great way to help kind of loosen things up and help you sleep as well. Relaxing. One thing that can help too is uh, using heat on these muscles. It's going to help those muscles relax, it's going to create blood flow, make sure we get oxygen and uh, nutrients to those muscles that are tight. It's usually muscles that are tight are also damaged muscles. You need to be repairing those. Okay. All right. Any questions on that, guys? Okay. Super easy. Again, this one should be feeling good, should not be painful. All right. Okay. Um, so, next one, if you guys are actually trying to find a doorway, uh, 
that means I have to go and right? just figure out how I'm going to do this here. So, let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up to this doorway up here. Bear with me. Okay, so we got our doorway. What you're going to do. You guys can use the tennis ball too. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that ball and you're going to place it on the top of your shoulder here. Okay. Like right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to pretend like you're trying to tackle that door, that doorway. Okay. So you're pinching here, pinning here, and then the side. doing is we're putting pressure into the doorway and then we're what we're doing is we're trying to move that ball around throughout here okay and you guys can say it's gonna be different for everybody everybody's gonna be tight in different areas okay and so you just gotta find that spot that's tight for you okay another thing is that upper so that trap that trap the trapezius muscle is broken into the upper trap, mid trap, and lower trap. Sometimes people also have tightness in their mid trap. Okay, so what you can do is go and find a wall, and actually, let me see here so you can see. All right, what you're gonna do is you're going to take that ball and place it kind of right where right by your shoulder blade, okay, in between your spine and where your shoulder blade starts. Okay, and where people have a lot of knots, you're gonna place that and you're gonna pin it up against the wall. Okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your arm, bring it across your body, and then you're going to be moving around searching for different knots. Okay, and if you find a knot, what you can do is you can pause on it. Okay, and this is a technique called ischemic compression. So it's a fancy term for just saying that we're gonna be pushing down on the muscle and by pushing down on that, we're decreasing how much blood flow is going to that area. Muscles can only contract if they're getting blood flow. So if we push down on that muscle, okay, and remove the, how much blood can get to that muscle, that muscle is going to actually release because it physically can't contract just based on physiology, okay, because it's not getting blood flow, okay, and oxygenation. So we do that, and then what you can also do, make it even more intense, and this is a, uh, called the ART active release technique. You're going to find that that knot, okay. Pause, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your arm, bring it up, and then bring it down. Okay, so what this is doing is it's pulling that muscle over the top of that ball. So instead of the, us moving the ball, we're actually moving the muscle and causing that to change and go over that ball. And it's going to help release that as well. Okay, you're going to do about 10 reps there. Okay, each side, don't forget to do the other side. Okay, so those are four great exercises that are going to make huge differences, okay, if you do them consistently. Okay, you have to do them twice a day, okay, ideally two to three sets. All right, and again, I'll upload this routine into the group, okay, um, so keep an eye out for that, okay. So, review two stretches, and then we also went over, actually went over three different soft tissue things, okay, the ones with the foam roller, side to side with the head, okay. The one where we tackle the doorway, and then the one where we pin up against the wall and kind of go up to that mid trap as well. Okay, so that'll help decrease the knots there. All right. So again, consistency is key. All right, this is going to help a lot and help significantly um, to get you guys started in the right direction. Okay. So if it, if you feel improvement, but if um, over like the next few weeks, but don't feel like it's completely gone. Again, these are just exercises that help generally. Okay. Um, a lot of times people just need a little bit more, okay? And that's, that's something where you're gonna, we need to find the root cause of this, okay? We went over a lot of mobility stuff. A lot of times it's strengthening that you need as well, okay? But it's hard to give strengthening exercise when I don't, when there's so many muscles in the body and everybody's gonna be, um, everybody's gonna be weaker in different areas. What's the size of the massage ball? Great question. So it doesn't really matter. Um, you can use, it's about the, so this massage ball is about the size of a tennis ball. You really could use a tennis ball. 
that's fine. A tennis ball, a lacrosse ball, really doesn't make too much of a difference of the size. Obviously, you don't want something like this big, okay? Something just generally around this size. doesn't have to be exact, okay? About the size of a tennis ball, all right? Great question. All right, guys. So if you guys decide you want to help on this or further help, this is something that we specialize in, okay? It's help, something that a lot of people don't know that physical therapists can actually uh, treat and make huge changes. Um, but if uh, the headaches are being generated because, or their tension headaches being generated by musculoskeletal, in my opinion, we're actually most equipped uh, to deal with that because we're musculoskeletal experts, okay? And uh, we've helped tons of people with uh, headaches get back to um, being able to concentrate at work. Now I have to be having these, this nagging tension constantly and always being having that in the back of their mind too because it's exhausting, all right? And so if you guys want help with that, happy to help uh, because you guys attend the workshop today get 50% off, all right, the initial evaluation. And then after the evaluation, we'll sit down and discuss, you know, how many sessions are we gonna take, or is this gonna take? Like I said, we see this day in and day out, and typically patients with headaches usually only need like five to 10 visits with us, and, and then they're good. And it's taken care of once and for all. And they really don't have to worry about it coming back because we treated the root issue. We're not, a lot of these are, is kind of just, a lot of these exercises I gave you was kind of just treating the symptoms. We also wanna find the root cause of it too. And that's what the evaluation is going to help with that. Okay. Rather than just kind of putting a band-aid on things, we want to get to that root cause. Okay. So if you guys want to take advantage of that, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link where um, what we do is we'd hop on a phone call for 10, 15 minutes because I don't want to waste your guys' time. I want to make sure that we can really help you guys um, before you come in. Um, and sometimes people don't even need an evaluation. Uh, a lot of times if it's really minor, what I can do is I can just give you kind of point you guys in the right direction without even having to come in. Um, and so um, I'm going to drop this link where you guys can, we'll hop on a phone call for 10, 15 minutes and discuss, you know, what your goals are, how long this, this has been going on for. Um, we can also address other issues. A lot of times um, people don't just have um, headaches. They also have other issues. Like a lot of times where they have shoulder pain, subsequent shoulder pain as well. So that's something we can um, address too. Okay. So um, let me find that link here. Then you guys just fill that out and then usually I reach out to you guys in less than 24, yeah, 24 hours. Um, so I'm happy to help out that way as well, okay? So here is the link. If you guys want to take advantage of that. Um, but yeah, guys, hope you guys found it, found it, found it beneficial and helpful. And uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. Just make sure to tag me, uh, Ben Boggy, and just so I get a notification that there are questions and I'm happy to help too, okay? All right, well, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and have a great uh, upcoming weekend as well. And then I will see you guys next week. All right, bye, guys.